Okay, welcome to 2.2. So, moving on here. Um, what we're going to be doing now is something called bar graphs. So, bar graphs, if you didn't remember, as a preview, looks something like this, right? So, like, there are these bars. So, that's kind of what this uh, topic is going to be about. First off, when to use bar graphs. So, that we're going to use bar graphs when we're using something called discrete data. So, that's this. So, discrete data just means that you've got a well discrete number and discrete means like like it's a like a certain number so if i look down at this right so we've got the city um their population of can or canadian cities we've got these cities and then population in thousands so i've got this is my population for vancouver i can't have a um you know part of that right so i can't like if i said like what's the population of our classroom and say there's like 28 students in our classroom i can't have 28.4 students right i can only have discrete numbers so like 28 or 29 or 30 so that's when we're going to use these bar graphs so it's the fact that we can't have these like decimal numbers we can't have part of something okay and we kind of like to use these bar graphs when, when that's the case so Let's just move on to the first one here. So it says a company tracked how new software was obtained and installed on their computers. Um, the results are given by the table below. Draw a bar graph to represent the data. Okay, so we've got these things across the bottom is probably what you'd want to do. And then these things going up the side. So um, here, so what we're going to do Whoop. make our graph again or okay so we got that now okay so I wrote the names down across the bottom here um, and don't write out everything just kind of make it so you can kind of understand which one it is so in the first one it's in-house ID department I just called that IT department the next one in-house IT with help from provider. I call that IT with help. Um, the next one, outsourced to service provider. So I said outsourced to SP, service provider. And then outsourced to development partner. I went outsourced to DP and then other. And I probably could have shortened up the word outsourced to, you, you, to make it a little bit easier to write in there. Yeah, that's kind of the crappy thing with these. You have to write those out. Now it says percentage or percentage of total software installations. So on the side here, we'd write percent of um, total software installs. And then we're only really going to need to go up to 60%. So I'm going to make six ticks. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay. Now um, we just need to make our uh, little blocks. So first one I've got. Um, you got 58% there. If you want to, to kind of make it look right, you put little like dashes or something like that in there to kind of show. And then the next one, let's say, so 16%, you'll make that a different color. Um, see if I can do this. Okay. 16%. They should all be the same width block too. So if mine aren't, that's just because I'm not doing a very good job. But then you might want to make dashes kind of going the other way for this one, just to kind of help show that they're different. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So you show something like that, and then I'm going to pause it and do the rest here. Okay, so there's my bar graphs. Um, the only thing that I would probably change next time, though, um, to make things just look a little bit to easier to compare, is this one, this bar. I probably would have swapped it with this bar so that you could see that, you know, they were just kind of like going down, like it went from the tallest one and then went shorter, 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 shorter. 
because it doesn't need to be in this order, right? It doesn't matter if you had outsourced to DP or outsourced to SP first. So next time I'd swap those two around is the only change I'd make. All right. So number two here says the following graph shows Jamie's height from age 10 to age 18. So we got age along the left, height across the bottom. And then it says, suggest two ways to improve the way the data is presented. Okay, so two ways that the data could be changed. Well, one, it's kind of awkward it just being on its side, right? Usually if we're talking, especially if we're talking about like how tall something is, it's better to draw it straight up and down because our brains think about tall being up and down, not laying on their side. So yeah, I'd, I'd flip those around. I'd have the age across the bottom and I'd have the height going up and down. And then the other one is I'd probably just start it from zero too. Instead of it, it starts at age 10. It'd be better if we had our, it start from age zero, I'd say. Okay, redraw the graph in a way that better represents the data. I'll, uh, I'll let you guys skip that one actually though, so we can cancel that one. All right, three. Okay, Sabine is a staff supervisor at City Fairgrounds. She made the graph below to show the number of employees working at the fair each month. Give two reasons why the graph may be misread. Okay, so on the bottom, we've got our month. Going up the top, we've got the number of employees. So going that way, right? Okay, so two ways that might be misread. Well, first thing I'm kind of noticing is that how come these bars are from January to March? So this is really three months, right? January, February, March. But they're all represented as one bar. How do I know what percentage of that was... January, February, or March. There was it all equal? Was one of the months way more? We so we just don't really know that, right? Same with this one, right? To April to May. Um yeah. So and then these ones are really tall, right? They're going up, but there's just a single month there. So then I'd say the other one that somebody might make a mistake on is they'd say, Well, okay, this one's really kind of like fat. Does that mean that there was like a lot of employees there? Um, right. So they might, they might think that that's actually kind of substantial, right? Like that there'd be quite a bit in that. Uh, but there's not, right. There's still only just however many people in that two months, right? So really these bars should be even lower if you were talking about just one month. So if it was just May, it'd be like down there probably. Okay. Okay. Number four says uh, carbon dioxide, CO2, emissions contrib contribute to climate change, and so they are closely monitored by governments and environmental groups. The following two graphs represent CO2 emissions worldwide from 1995 to 2005. All right, so these two graphs, just kind of take a look at them there. A says, which graph is a better representation of worldwide CO2 emissions? Why? So looking at this, what I'd say is that look at the bottom. So look at the bottom like year or sorry, like actual emissions going here. So it starts, it goes 0, 10, 20, 30. This one goes 20 and then goes up by decimals. So it goes up to, you know, 27.5. Um, first off, I think if you were choosing a graph um, to graph carbon dioxide emissions, you probably wouldn't choose a bar graph anyway, but they did. So we're, we're going to talk about which one <laughs> would be better. Um, well, I'd say the first one to be a better representation because it actually starts at zero and it looks like just, you know, it, it's definitely going up, right, over time. Like the, the emissions are definitely getting more and more and more. But that doesn't look near as drastic as this one, right? This one looks like it's like just really going up really quick. But this one looks like it's going up like, you know, pretty quick like that. So it makes a big difference on how you scale these things. So what are the emissions in 1999? So 1999, really just need to read the graph there. 1999, be like right there. Yeah, so um, this one might be a good one to actually, like this graph, might be a little better to actually see what the emissions really are there. Okay, um, what were they in 2005? So again, I'll let you guys just figure that one out. So what were they in 2005? And then D... Why might the more misleading graph be used to represent the data? 
Um, well, there's a lot of people that would want to push their own kind of agenda, whatever that might be, right? We can, we can always make something look the way we want it to look. If you want it to look really bad, you would graph it like this. If you wanted to make it look like it wasn't near as bad as it, as, as, as it might be, you might want to graph it like this. Okay, so now what we're gonna be getting into is um, choosing which kind of graph is the best one for a particular set of data. Um, so we've been talking about both vertical and horizontal bar graphs. What I mean by that is these, right? So horizontal bar graph, vertical bar graph. Um, so sometimes you could use anything, right? So uh, we've got this set of data for population and A says display the data on both horizontal and vertical. So if we displayed that data on a vertical line graph, that works. You know, that works to show it that way. It doesn't, I don't particularly like looking at it when it's like a horizontal graph like that. Um, this one I think is a better way to kind of represent because it just, our brains work better at seeing things up and down sometimes, right? Like you can tell that this is like a peak right there. This is less obvious to me that that's like a peak than when it's on its side. So I'd pick that one personally. And then if you look at the broken line graph that we did in the last topic there, I'd say this one's even better. It kind of that really kind of shows like, like it's just easier for our brains to kind of see how the population has gone up a little bit and then starts to go down, like just that whole connecting the dots thing. Okay, and then all that this is, the question said to draw a graph that is misleading. Well, yeah, this, this starts to look really misleading, right? And it's misleading really because of right there. We started our scale at 31.5 instead of at zero. So now any little bit of a change in our population looks huge on this graph. So again, if somebody had wanted to really make it look like the population was going down at an alarming rate, they would graph it like this to try to make their point or try to make, try to be, try to be misleading probably. This is something in the news and with the, um, um, the government and all that kind of stuff when they're showing us data it's something to be on the lookout for is like does that graph make sense or are they trying to make the the uh, the graph look worse than it is okay and then here too we got again we've got a misleading kind of graph with a bar graph because again in this case because it started at 31.5 right it didn't start at zero so now this looks like huge variation in our population even though the numbers are all really pretty close right Okay, so I'm going to let you guys do five here. It says, given the vertical bar graph below, draw a broken line graph depicting the same data. Which graph seems to be the better representation of the data and why? So draw that out and then answer the question there. Okay, number six. The table below shows the number of tickets sold per day until a rock concert is sold out. What is the general trend in sales over the 10... Uh, day period. So you could graph that if you wanted to see the trend over time, but what I'd probably do is look at their numbers. You can kind of probably for the most part see what's happening over 10 days. So you tell me what is the general trend over the 10 day period. Um, and then B here says Darlene used a graphing tool to draw a horizontal bar graph and a broken line graph of the data. Which graph is a better representation and why? So what one do you think would be the better one? Well, if I'm looking at, at this one, number of tickets sold on this bar graph, you can see in the first day, I can see like there's like a big chunk of of, of a, a bar here, right? That's that's just easy for my brain to, to tell me, okay, a bunch of people are represented in that graph. So from there to there, there's a whole bunch of people that were in there. And then the second day, there was a whole bunch of people in that bar, right? All the way up until the last day, there's just a, like only a few people in that one. And then this one, number of tickets sold, this isn't really that great to think about, right? So we've got, well, actually, I just kind of noticed this too. She kind of made a mistake on this. Whoop. This should say um, day of sales. And this should be... Um, Number sold. Huh, weird. Anyway, so day of sales on the bottom. 
um, you can see as you're going up. And then you can see in the first one, there's a whole bunch, right? But since there's nothing below, my brain doesn't really tell me that that was like a whole bunch of people in there. I just see that as like a point on a graph. I don't really think about that as actually being like a whole bunch of people. The bars were easier for me to think, okay, that's that's a whole bunch of people represented by that bar. This one just seems like a number. It's just harder to actually get a good grasp on that, I guess. But a bit of it's kind of personal preference too, so. Okay, so example three, Roger's a real estate agent in Red Deer, Alberta. The graph below compares the average house prices of new single family homes in real, uh, real resale, uh, not new, single family homes. Okay, so in these ones, all we're doing is we're gonna have like two bars in the same spot. So we're gonna have resale homes and then new homes, like in the same spot there, right? So that's pretty much what this is. Um, I'd like you guys, to, you can look through this question to help you out with the next one here because this is gonna be the same type of thing. So the following table shows average weekly household expenses of Canadian households with Canadians or with children compared to the expenses of households in uh, lowest income range in the country. Okay, so we've gonna, we're gonna have two different bars on each one. So we've got you know that one and that one. And then these headers here, like food and drink, that's what's gonna be go what goes across the bottom. So maybe I'll even kind of get you started here. So it's gonna be something like, you know, make your graph like that. And then going across the bottom here, this would be like food and drink. Oop. Food and drink, right? Going up there. And you are gonna have, um, you know, for the first one here, goes up to, so I'd make my graph probably go up by maybe 50, 100, 150, and 200. So the first one here, we're gonna have two bars. The first bar will go up to like 104. Okay, and then the next bar would go up to 140. something like that and then the other thing you want to do is make a little legend so I'd have okay so the orange colored one we said was all households okay and then the green color would be lowest income Okay, and it would just be something like that. So then you'd fill in the rest of them as you go there too. All right. Explain the trends in spending of the lowest income families compared to all families. Okay, so now interpreting these double bar graphs. Um, it says, in order for citizens of other countries to travel to Canada, they may be required to get a visa, which is a document that shows the person is authorized to enter the country. Sally works at Citizenship and Immigration Canada and has gathered the information on the number of visas applied for and the number of approved over the course of one year. Okay, so we got a double bar graph here. Applications are the dark color. Approvals are the lighter color. In which month was the most applications for visas received? How many visa applications were received in that month? Um, in what, or in which month were the fewest applications received? How many were received in that month? Okay, so the first part here, in which month was the most applications for visas received? So applications were the dark colored one, it looks like that was in June. How many visa applications were received in that month? So looking at that, this line would be 700. I'd say that we were at probably 680. Um, in which month were the fewest applications received? So fewest applications, that looks like that's in January. How many were received that month? So that month, you know, if this tick was 100, then that looks like we were at like 120 or 120 probably. Okay. In which month was the greatest difference between the number of applications and the number 
of approvals. All right, so now the biggest difference. So really, we're looking for which one has the biggest span between the dark colored line and the light colored line. So that one looks like quite a bit, but I think if you look closely, I think that was probably in July. Looks like the difference between that line and that line is the biggest. So how can we figure that out? Well, what I would do is figure out, okay, so this line here, I was to erase those so we know we're talking about July. Um, the number of applications in July would have been, it looks like, well, this is 500, so 540 probably. So I'm going to write that down. 540 applications. I'll call that apps. Okay, and then the number of actual approvals. Well, this number is 300 at that line. So it looks like this was like 300 and... Um, 20 probably yeah 320 well, I guess apps doesn't work because they're both apps <laughs> anyway so 320 so we're gonna 540 minus 320 that's gonna be what the difference is approximately right okay so that's gonna be yeah 220 Okay, number nine, uh, the following graph shows uh, the high and low daily temperatures for one week in November in Fincher Creek, Alberta. Okay, so we got this graph going on. Um, A says, why are most of the bars going downward? So I'll let you guys answer that. B, why is there no black bar on Saturday? Okay, so the rest of them all had a black bar either going up or going down, right? On Saturday, we got neither. What's what's going on there? So I'll let you guys answer that one too. Ask me in class if you if you want to hand with that. Um, what is this significant or what is significant about Wednesday's temperature? So looking over to Wednesday here, what do you know this about Wednesday's temperature? And then D, what is the general trend in temperature during that week? So general trend in temperature. Um, so that just means are things getting like, you know, warmer to colder or are they getting colder to warmer? Are they staying the same? That type of thing. So what's the general trend there? Okay, new skill again now. Um, this one, just the stacked bar graph is what it's called. It's the same as the other ones that we had before. Remember we, we had like two sets of data in the same graph and we put them like side by side. We'd, you know, have like one here and then we do like a different color and it'd be right beside it, you know, like there. It's like that, but instead of them being side by side, they're going to be like stacked on top of each other. That's it. It's just a way of saving space almost really. Okay, so let's go past that. Okay, so Trina did a survey of her school to find out students' favorite sports to watch on TV. The results are summarized below. So we've got two sets of data just like we had before, right? Draw a double vertical bar graph and a stacked vertical bar graph to represent the data. I'll actually let you guys get away with not doing the double vertical bar graph. That would have been the one that would have like, you know, a, two bars beside each other. So don't do that one. Do the vertical or the stacked vertical bar graph to represent the data. So that's the one. That's this one, right? So you're going to re represent it like this. So go back to the last page if you need to to kind of help you out with that one. Um, yeah. And then you don't need to do question D either then. And I'll also let you not do 11. So we can cancel that one. All right. Practice your new skills. So we're just going over everything we've learned about bar graphs now. Okay. So... Petro is a trainer at a local gym. He recorded the following information about the number of people who use the equipment during the day. Graph the data on a horizontal bar graph. So remember which way horizontal is. Horizontal is, is you know, this way, right? Horizontal. So the bars are all going to be going horizontal way. Um, so I'll let you guys do that. Go back and, like, look at your notes if you need to. Um, yeah. So again, though, just make sure that you guys are doing this. And then before you move on to the next one, before you move on to 
uh, I guess chapter three, or sorry, no, sorry, chapter 2.3. I'm gonna need you to show me this work, right? So make sure that you're actually doing this, even though it's not one of the questions in the in the Ed puzzle. Okay. For or question two, a multiplex theater has eight different sized th uh, theaters. In order to determine which movie should be shown in which theater, Molly pulled people on the street as to which movie they would attend. Her results are displayed in the graph. Um, pulled, by the way, means like just to ask people, just got a bunch of different info from people. She didn't hit people with polls. Uh, <laughs> okay, so which are the two most popular movies? Which is least popular? Number three, use the graph below to discuss the general trend of students taking home economics or taking home economics classes at a high school in Brandon, Manitoba over a period of five years. Okay, number four, a real estate agent wants to compare the number of single detached house and multi-unit construction projects started in Abbotsford, BC over a period of five years. So there's our graph. Use the graph to explain trends in housing projects in Abbotsford. Use the data from the graph to draw a double bar graph comparing the number of housing projects. Which graph do you prefer for representing the data? Why? Okay, and that's going to be it. So we'll pick up on 2.3 in the next video.